Okay, let's talk about circle theorems with angles, and there are a lot of definitions that are already written here, so feel free to pause this video at some point and just copy them. I'm gonna just keep talking as I explain them, so there's probably gonna be a lot of pausing on your end here. So first of all, a theorem, just in case no one ever told you, it's a conjecture, something that we thought was true, and then it's been proven to be true, just so you know. So that's gonna happen a lot in the process of this. We'll say, oh, here's a theorem, here's a theorem. It's something that's been proven to be true. A chord, probably heard that before, is a segment. Segment has two endpoints, right? So it's, it's gonna be like from here to here, not extended further, whose endpoints are on the circle. So I'm gonna draw a chord just so I can have a little frame of reference here. So there's a chord, and I'm gonna start naming some points. We're gonna say that's A, that's B. We're gonna call this circle, circle O, by the way. You always name a circle based on its center point. So if I'm gonna talk about this circle, I would say, oh, this is circle O, or if this was a Q, it'd be circle Q or whatever. Okay, so this AB is a chord. So AB is a chord. Also, chords could be semicircles, and no, I'm not a semicircle, sorry, diameters. And that means that this, and I'm making up points here, can also be a chord. So BC is a chord, but it goes through the center, so therefore it is a diameter. Still a chord there. Okay, the secant of a circle is a ray, a line, a segment that in, intersects a circle at two points. And what's not in this definition that is strongly implied, and I got this definition out of a book, um, but this really means that the the part is going, there's part of the line, ray, segment that's going to go outside the circle. So for example, that right there, crooked as it is, even though I used a ruler, that is a secant. And there it is. And we're going to start using other letters, so like D and E. So a secant of a circle could be like line DE. Now I could say that DE segment itself is a chord. Now I could also put a point out here, if I want to put a point out here, and I would say that the segment DE is a chord, but the segment df ending and beginning at d and f would be a secant so chord secant just saying okay a tangent to a circle is a line or array or a segment in the plane of the circle it needs to be in the plane of the circle that means it's not going to be coming at it from a different angle it's all on the same flat surface they threw that definition in there that part of the defini definition in there just to clarify things a little bit because there could be exceptions to what they said so Again, not just not coming in from an odd angle. Line, ray, or segment in the plane of the circle that intersects the circle at exactly one point. There are properties of this that we're going to discuss in this lesson. And there's a good example of it right there. Let's put a point right here, and we'll put a point right there. And if you're like, whoa, can I extend it? Sure, sure, make it a line if you want to. A little crooked there. And it's going to touch at one point, and only one point. And what do we have now? G, H, and I. So I would say that line GI or segment GI or even the ray from G to I, a ray starts at a point and then goes forever in the other direction. That basically would be a tangent GI. A major arc is an arc longer than a semicircle and it's named with at least three points and we're going to put the little swooshy over it. You'll see what I mean in a second. We'll switch colors. So if I wanted to talk about an arc of a circle, it's a piece of the circumference, then I would basically be naming a point and then just going from there. But if I want it to be a major arc, then for example, like B, and then A, and then D, I'll call it bad. B, A, D is a major arc. And I have to use three points, because if I just said B, D, your assumption might be that you're going this way which kind of leads me to the next one. So a minor arc would be BD, okay? Also, I could say BED. BED is still the same as BD. So I can use three letters if I like, but it's only gonna be less than half a circle. 
And then of course a semicircle would be, well, exactly half a circle. I don't have that definition in there. So what I have is a major arc that's going to cover more than half the circle, have to have three letters, so I'll have some sense of direction and I'll know that it's covering more than half the circle. Minor arc just covers a piece of the circle. So central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center of a circle. What in the world does that mean? What it really means is this. So what I could do is draw an angle at Q, and I'm going to just draw a little bit right there. Right there. So there is an angle at Q, and it's CQD, for example. And uh, for example, we'll put angle CQD. I could put another one if I wanted to. I could do, um, let's connect this one right here. A, Q, B, but notice the middle letter, the, the central letter in this is always gonna be the center of the circle. Angle A, Q, B. Now, clearly there are several others. I could do B, Q, D, which is the same as D, Q, B. There's lots of other different ones I could do. We have a little bit of vocabulary out of the way. Now we're gonna jump into the theorems.